Welcome guys to another episode of United Talk and in this one I have four stories that I'm going to go over for you over the past few, uh, week that has been catching my eye and I'm recording this just before the Reds play um, against Shanghai Shenhua today at 1pm so if you guys want to watch that match tune in to MUTV um, at 1pm for the kickoff or if you can't get that service you can I think get some streams over the internet if not you can always wait till tomorrow and when I deliver my match report to you guys as well anyway let's get going and the first thing I'm going to talk about is our uh, new away kit that's been launched over the past week it was launched in South Africa you know Rio Ferdinand, uh, Hiko Makeda and Antonio Valencia all had to go to this uh, news conference to launch this kit and um, it's a white kit it's a white shirt with uh, black shorts and I have to say um, the white shirt looks really really nice I mean it's really chic and elegant um, it's very simple and plain actually but you know that adds to the character and the style of the shirt so it's basically as you can see here and I'll show you the picture now um, it's just plain white shirt all the uh, emblem and uh, you know Nike logo is all black and then there are there's hint of red with you know around the collar and also the sleeves so it's a really nice shirt in my opinion the shorts I, I, I don't uh, like you know care that much really all I buy now is just the shirt itself the shorts is black with the gingham uh, design on it with you know the stripes um, just similarly like our home kit but that has been applied to the shorts um, you, if you got some of you guys don't like the home kit, I myself have grown into it uh, since the preseason tour. It looks quite good, so I might get it as well. But uh, this white shirt, I'm definitely going to get because it does look really nice. And a lot of you guys on Twitter agreed with me as how to how it looked, and you guys definitely think that it's one of the best looking kits uh, in recent times that has come out for United. Um, yeah, again, it's it's really nice, and I think. Um, an interesting fact is that Salex actually demanded that the away kit was white and there were some rumours that it might be blue to similar like last year but with the Gingham design um, he wanted white because to remind us about the defeat to you know Barcelona um, a few years back and also um, uh, the one at Wembley so he just wants us to rem uh, serves as a reminder really to say um, these are the kit that we kind of failed in and these are the this same colour of kit will uh, hopefully achieve like you know for progresses and we will break through that barrier where um, the white might be a curse or almost so um, so Alex wanting that as a motivational kind of like speech tool if you like so it's you know it's really good overall anyway for the design of it and I'm sure a lot of you guys will like order this shirt get uh you know new signings in etc like that on the back so it will be really in interesting to see if you guys do order this in you know your number so what do you guys think of this kit and leave a comment below as to who you would put on the back of this shirt if you were going to order one so leave a comment below for that story guys the next story i'm going to talk about is a story that has been rumbling all uh, you know through the last year or so and it's to do with the number one uh, at united the first um, kind of like episode of this was when David De Gea kind of first came and a lot of people were saying how he would fit into the Reds mould and you know get into the number one spot straight away and Anders Lindegaard would be regarded as his number two and I think that was mostly the plan because you know if you if you just looked at the um, transfer fee that we paid for David De Gea um, it would definitely see like you know it was point the more obvious kind of like answer to that and that Salex saw him as the long term replacement for Van der Sar but to be fair to Anders Lindegaard he has like proven his case out of last year and earned a lot of respect for his performances uh, and you know a lot of people saying that how he should actually be the number one because of his aerial ability is much better although he doesn't have you know the reflexes or you know any outstanding skills that De Gea might possess he's a uh, all-round very solid goalkeeper who's very re reliable and you know he's gonna get a job done when it's necessary and he did that um, mid uh, season proving to everyone that he can play at the very top uh, week in week out and he kept the hay out and unfortunately for Lindegaard he just suffered that ankle injury uh, in training and then you know lit 
the the hair performed so well at the end of last season that this kind of like uh, uh, discussion almost ended. But again, the hair is away at the Olympics uh, this summer, so Lindegaard has his chance to impress. He did quite well against Amazuli FC in the first preseason match, and you know um, he has come out this week saying that he's not here to pick his nose like he did a year ago. And um, yeah. Lindegaard, I think he has to definitely got a chance to prove himself as De Gea is away at the Olympics. And Lindegaard, like I said, he's a very reliable goalkeeper. And if he does start at the Everton game, I have no kind of like issues with that. And it's just up to De Gea to, you know, come back, prove himself again to say to Eric Steele, the goalkeeper coach, and Salex that he is the, the man that will fulfill that potential that he has and replace Van der Sar for the next 10, 15 years at the club. So. It will be a very interesting battle, but I think it's all good because, you know, with a great club like ours, um, we need a lot of competition in places, and when there's competition, they're going to push each other on. But I do remain, uh, to my opinion, that I believe that the Haya will probably start if he does come back and play quite well in, you know, the last few weeks of pre-season for, like, you know, training matches, etc., but like I said, if Lindegaard really push himself out uh, in the next few games against you know the likes of Barcelona, etc., then he could get his chance. You never know. And that's the beauty of football, I guess, that you never know what's going to happen. But Lindegaard's saying that he's going to ch- rival David De Gea again for the number one jersey. And it's all going to be good for us supporters to see who comes out on top. So leave a comment below, guys, as to who you think should wear the number one uh, shirt at United. And the third story I'm going to talk about is to do with a player that has been criticised the world over and it's to do with Bebe. Um, as you guys know, we bought Bebe for around £7 million in 2010 uh, and a lot of you... A lot of you guys, including myself actually, didn't know who he was. Um, he was, you know, this kind of like uh, story where he uh, grew up on the streets, then he played for... Uh, the third division Portuguese team and then we snapped him up immediately on the recommendation of Carlos Quiros, the former assistant to SLX and you know um, the signing didn't work out very well because you know Bebe looked very weak, um, he didn't look like he didn't have a good touch etc. Um, so last season he was loaned out to Besiktas but unfortunately he uh, suffered some uh, ligament injury that ruled him out for like eight months and um, the first match he played was against uh, Ajax Cape Town last Saturday for United so you know it was a long road back for Bebe but to be fair he, he recovered and um, the first thing I saw of him against Ajax was that he did look a bit bulkier and looked like he spent a bit of time in the gym um, and Telex deployed him as a striker and I think that that's an interesting move like I said because um, with the uncertain future of Berbatov and with the departure of Michael Owen, um, he could very well might be you know the full striker if he does stay and you know get his occasional outings if there's a need for him. So I think that could be um, something interesting. And Salex has confirmed it, saying that um, Bebe has impressed him in training and that he he might now have a, a new future at United after you know that barren spell in the first uh, 10 months at United so um, Bebe it looks like he's going to stay for this season definitely and Zalek's so going to give him another chance to see whether he can actually you know prove himself at a very top level and I have to say that you know uh, in the first season he might not look very good but to be fair like you know going from the Portuguese third league all the way to the Premier League in one in a f- few short months is kind of a massive massive step up and probably a, a huge shock in uh, culture for him so it, it it might not have proven himself but you never know he is like uh, you know only 22 so he might have something up his sleeve when he is more comfortable with culture etc so um, expect some things to happen with Bebe this uh, summer and the next season um, this, the goal he scored against at Cape Town was quite good you know, decent first touch and, you know, simple finish really against an empty net. But again, he had to be there to finish it and he had the composure to do it. So, Bebe, he might prove himself as a decent backup striker. You never know. But again, um, yeah, hopefully he'll prove us wrong. Uh, hopefully, anyway. So, what do you guys think of Bebe? Leave a comment below and, you know, how and where would you guys play him in the new season? 
And the last story I'm going to talk about is to do with Danny Welbeck. As you know, Danny Welbeck, there are concerns about his contract issues, etc. But apparently those talks are ongoing and there shouldn't be a problem really. Um, because Danny Welbeck, like I said, a local boy, born and bred in Manchester so and he supports United. So there's no chance of him leaving really. And Danny Welbeck should sign a new deal soon, I hope. So anyway, so Alex has come out this week saying about how he has set Danny Welbeck a 20 goal um, target for the new season because basically he said last season he got about 12 goals, um, 9 in the league together. So um, that's a good uh, start for a young player, but to be able to call himself a top, top player, um, Danny Welbeck has to push it to the next level and score like, you know, 20 goals for uh, consistently for season in, season out to, you know, come up the, at the top of the ladder, if you like, at the striking uh, league. So it's a interesting target, but Sir Alex has always done this in the past. You know, I think a few seasons ago he set Wayne Rooney a 30 league goals uh, target and he achieved that. And he also set a target for Ronaldo, and then he bet him on that, etc. So Alex has been uh, known for doing this sort of thing, and I think this is a, a good move for him because he wants to push Danny Welbeck to that next level because he thinks that Danny Welbeck has a you know all the potential to fulfil that kind of like uh, his ability and feel, fulfil his future as a top class striker. He Welbeck could in the next next few years could be our Didier Drogba he, he has the physique for it Danny Welbeck you know very tall strong very pacey and you know has an eye for goal but to uh, be called a top class striker like I said he has to achieve these sort of targets for himself in order to be you know class as one of those players uh, amongst uh, you know the best like Sergio Aguero, uh, Diego Forlan, you know, etc. So he needs to push himself to that next level. But I think that Danny Welbeck, surely he will get better in the next few years. But like I said, to he needs to he has done a lot of growing in the past year due to his loan to Sunderland and you know forming a great partnership with Wayne Rooney. But uh, in the next few years, I think we're going to expect a lot more from Danny Welbeck in terms of his goal scoring record. So it's exciting time for um, Danny Welbeck and hopefully United supporters to see this one of their kids, you know, f uh, going from the academy all the way to the top team, first team, and developing himself into a top class and, you know, hopefully world beater of a striker as well. So, what do you guys think of that? that Danny Welbeck story and do you guys think Danny Welbeck has the potential to score 20 goals this season? I myself think he does but again he has to work hard at it and hopefully he can do it and help us to win our 20th league title. So there you guys have it for the 8th episode of United Talk. I hope you like this video guys and please if you do please like this video, comment below for any of the stories and also subscribe to the channel for more content to come. And Another mention I have to say is that I've relaunched the uh, the website manunitedaily.com. If you'd like it, to visit it, please uh, click the link below and you it will take you straight over to the website. Leave your feedback to me as to how you like the website, etc. So if you guys like this video again, please rate, comment and subscribe. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time. Cheers.